Hi everybody, my name is Captain Kevin and this is the Power Director 9 tutorial on working with a 100 track timeline. The goal of this tutorial is to show you how to resize PD9 windows, use the timeline zoom control, resize the timeline tracks, add more tracks to the timeline, move and copy the tracks, add clips from your media room library, and rename the clips using the alias. Let's get started by showing you how to resize the three main windows in PowerDirector 9. In the upper left hand corner is your media room library. This displays all your imported video clips, pictures, and sound clips in your project. It also will display the contents of the various rooms that are available. In the upper right hand corner is your preview window and this will display your project during your editing mode. In the bottom of the screen is your timeline tracks and this will display all your video tracks, effects tracks, title tracks, and all your audio tracks. You can resize these windows by using this vertical bar and sliding it to the right or to the left to resize those windows to your preference. The other controlling point is this horizontal bar but you can slide this up and down to resize to see as many of the video tracks as you have. It can become very important if you have lots of video tracks and you wanted to be able to see them at any one time. There's one last controlling arm located here on the left hand side of your ti timeline track and if you slide this over it will display the uh, labels for your video tracks. You can double click these and enter in a new name for any of these tracks. You may also need to zoom in and out on your timeline to be more precise during editing. You can do this in three different ways. You can move your cursor up to the top of the timeline and left click and drag to the left or the right to zoom in and out on the timeline. You can also use the zoom control in the lower left hand part of the screen and by clicking it you can zoom in and out. The third way is by using your keyboard. You can use the plus or minus key to make those changes. It's now possible to resize each of the tracks in the timeline to your particular preference. You can do this in a couple of different ways. One of the easiest ways is just move your cursor over to the track, left click, and just slide up and down to resize to your preference. The other way is just to right click on the timeline, select adjust track height, and you have three choices, small, medium, and large. By selecting one of these, you can quickly resize all the tracks to the same size. When you open PowerDirector 9 for the very first time, the default setting is two audio and video tracks on the timeline, track 1 and track 2. If you have a need to add additional video or audio tracks, you can do this in two different ways. One is by using this button here, which is the add additional video audio tracks to the timeline. When you click on this button, it brings up the track manager. And from here you can add video and audio tracks. As an example, if you wanted to add three more video tracks with three audio tracks associated with them, just change the number here. Also, if you notice on the positioning, you can place the particular tracks anywhere that you'd like. Click OK and it will automatically add the three audio and video tracks. Three, four, and five. I'll undo this here. The other way to add these tracks is just by right clicking on the timeline and select add tracks. This will bring up the same track manager menu and you can add the tracks through this method. There are also three other tracks can be displayed on the video timeline. To view these tracks, just right click on the video timeline you'll see three choices available. Show SVRT track, show chapter track, 
and show subtitle track. By clicking on each of these, it will show each respective title on the timeline. It's possible in PowerDirector 9 to copy or move an entire video track to a new location on the timeline. To copy a specific track, just right click on it and select Copy To. When this menu opens up, there's a drop down menu and you can select where you'd like the copied track to be located. In this example, we'll select below Track 2. Click OK and the entire timeline is copied into a new video track labeled Track 3. Let's do this once again. Just right click on the track, select Copy To, and in this case we'll copy it below Track 3. And again, it's duplicated in a new track labeled 4. To delete a track, just right click on it and select Remove Track. And you can also again move a video track to a new location. To do this, right click on the video track, select Move To, and then we will select above Track 1 and click OK. And just like that, the entire timeline is moved to a new video track. Once you've imported your video and picture clips into the media library, you'll now want to start placing them on the timeline for editing. The way to get them onto the timeline is very easy. You can just left click on a particular picture and drag it to the timeline. Left click and hold and drag to the timeline. You can also select a particular range if you wanted several pictures to be selected. You can select the first picture, hold the control key down on your keyboard, select it, hold the control key down on your keyboard and select it. Now you can drag these three pictures down to the timeline. You can also select a whole range. If you wanted to place all of these clips under the timeline at, at one shot, you can click and select the first clip, then hold the shift key down on your keyboard, select the last clip, and now all of the clips will be placed onto the timeline. You can also left click and hold and select the range by drawing a window around the clip. You can also add clips to the timeline by right-clicking on a clip and insert on selected track. So as an example, if I select track 2, highlight it, right-click on a particular clip I want to add, insert on selected track, it will place that particular clip on track 2. Now as an example, since this is working with a 100-track timeline, let's add a lot of tracks. Let's add 50 video tracks. I'll right click on the timeline and I will select small. So now we're going to see a large range of video tracks. This is where this type of, of method of adding video clips will be very very easy for you. So say for instance we want to add a clips to track 15. Just select track 15 and then select the range of clips we want to drag, right click, and insert on selected track. So very quickly, you can add a number of clips very quickly, just by right clicking and insert on selected track. Now let's go over the insert overwrite command that's now available in PD9. Let's place a range of clips onto the timeline. If we'd like to insert a video clip in between these two pictures, you can drag it down to the timeline, place it over the picture you'd like to insert it, release, and you'll get two choices, insert or overwrite. Let's choose insert, and it will easily insert the nature clip in between the two pictures. Let's just reverse that, undo it, now let's try placing it again, but this time we'll select Overwrite. 
And what that'll do is actually just replace all the pictures with that particular clip. Now let's talk a little bit about changing the alias name of the files found in your media room. What this does is temporarily changes the name of the files in your media room. As an example, I can right click on the Tulips JPEG, select Change Alias, and change this file to flower number one. Notice since I have these sorted by name, it's moving it to a no new location. I can rename this one flower two, and now these two files are grouped. And finally, I can rename the nature clip, change the alias to flower three, and these will all be grouped together. Now to change the files back, I right click on the file and reset the alias, and it will reset it back to the original name of the file. So this can be used in creating a project, and you need to temporarily assign new names to the files.